you through the streets of London I'll show you something to make you change your mind These may be the perceptions of homeless people, but there is the cold reality. Imagine being alone on the streets. Today there is around 156,000 young homeless and it is a number growing all the time. If you think you can make a video report either at school or in a club or with your friends, just let us know here at Q&A, room 2164, BBC School Programmes, White City, London, W12, 7TS. Goodbye until next week, and remember, don't squeeze your spots. In 25 minutes, Teaching Today offers advice to teachers on how to help and integrate pupils with long-term medical conditions. Now on BBC Two, a look behind the scenes of the criminal justice system in life school. Archibald McClellan. You are charged with the murder of your own child. Call Jean McClellan. My poor wee Christian. Take your time, Mrs. McClellan. Archie was shouting and raving and the children were screaming. Through the window, I saw the child repeatedly hit with a stool. <laughs> Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We find it proven that the panel killed the deceased. Christian McClellan. Archibald McClellan, I order that you be taken back to Inverary Jail, therein to be detained during all the days of your life. The time of rising for criminal prisoners shall not be later than six o'clock at any season of the year. On Sundays, Prisoners may rise an hour later or go to bed an hour earlier. In the past, fear was a great deterrent. Fear of being caught, fear of the great and terrible punishment. It was thought that by making people afraid, they would obey the law or suffer the consequences. Each day, the prisoners shall have eight ounces of oatmeal as porridge for breakfast. Two pints of barley broth with eight ounces of wheaten bread for dinner. And for supper, one and a half pounds of potatoes with a half pint of milk. someone accused of a crime who had failed to turn up in court to answer charges. They were held to be outside the law and if spotted could be brought to justice by ordinary citizens, the hue and cry. The ways of finding out whether people were guilty or not were fairly brutal. Trial by ordeal might mean that if the person floated they were guilty and if they sank they were innocent. Slowly, a fairer system came into being, with justices being appointed by the king. They travelled all over the country and held court at assizes. By the 18th century, there was a lot of unrest in the country, and so, in 1829, the first police force was set up to keep the peace. Right, so looks like someone's just gone through on a red. Let's see if we can stop them. It has always been important that the police are properly trained. They must be knowledgeable about what they can do. Venus, pull in front. X-ray 2, X-ray 2. Opposite 61. PC Jamie Mackay is patrolling with Sarah Clark. 
Sarah is out from school on work experience with the police. Right, I've just seen you go through a red traffic light. No, I didn't. Which is an offence. No, I didn't. Now, I believe you've been drinking. No, I haven't. So I require you to take a breath test. I haven't been drinking. Well, I believe that you may have been drinking. I think well. that because of the training that the police get given and the fact that they're actually seen as a figure of authority, have you ever that it just helps them to carry out what they've got to do. What you need to do is to do one continuous breath. It is a duty of a citizen to obey a law, obviously, if they, if they believe that the law is right. You know, we would expect them to, and we would expect them to pass that on through the generations as well. But obviously, there are times when there are a few hiccups. All right, Tinkerbell, you're nicked. All right, officer, all right, you're right. I shouldn't have done it. I haven't got an excuse, really. I mean, I've got a job, I've got a lovely mum. Me that slits me in the odd five every now and then. And yet I still go out, starting fights, stealing cars, wrecking the shopping precinct. No, you're right, officer. I've broken the law, and I should be punished. I'm glad you see it that way, son. Oi! So what are they going to do about it, eh? Lock me up? All the prisons are full. So who cares? Nick him, George. New laws are made in Parliament and are called Acts or Statutes. New Acts of Parliament are the result of discussion, often quite heated, with many different groups of people. And most of my constituents have no right to do what they want to do, which is go shopping. They pass through five stages before going on to the House of Lords. If we allow big business to break the law, how do we argue that poor people or young people should not break the law too? The laws are interpreted by the courts, which are independent of Parliament. It's these decisions that the courts take that are central to British law. Judges must consider previous decisions taken by the courts in similar circumstances. The principle of precedent. People are more likely to keep the law if they agree that it is fair. In Scotland, shops can open legally on Sundays. In England and Wales, there's no agreement. It has been quite clear that the law is uncertain on this. Meanwhile, um, we don't think it's right that we should withhold from Sainsbury customers the choice of shopping on the Sunday before Christmas when our competitors are giving their customers that choice. If you don't agree with the law, there are ways of showing it. There's no law against a public demonstration of feeling, and Parliament does sometimes respond to public opinion. The law can change in response to changing public attitudes. In 1952, two teenagers were found guilty of the murder of a policeman. At 16, Chris Craig was too young to hang, but 19-year-old Derek Bentley was executed. The public were outraged, and eventually the law was changed and the death penalty was abolished. Forty years later, there was a public outcry over the case of Dr. Nigel Cox. He ended the life of a patient who had been in great pain. At his trial, Dr. Cox was found guilty of attempted murder. However, there was a lot of public support for him, and he received a very lenient punishment, two years suspended jail sentence. This case renewed the discussion about what amounts to murder in such circumstances, and will lead to more debate and possible review of the law. The Tottenham Three were jailed for the murder of PC Keith Blakelock during riots in 1985. At his trial, Winston Silcott and two others were found guilty, despite the fact that there were no witnesses. But there was continuing doubt over the evidence presented at the trial. People began to wonder if the law had not been applied fairly and that there had been a miscarriage of justice. 
After a great deal of public concern, the Tottenham Three were allowed to take their case to the Court of Appeal, which overturned the original guilty verdict. All human systems are apt to make mistakes, apt to get uh, things wrong. Uh, there is no perfect system. Uh, I believe our system is basically a good one, uh, but we shouldn't be complacent about it. We should be ready uh, to look at it to see whether we can improve it further. The criminal justice system relies very much on the general public playing their part. It is, as a juror, that an ordinary person makes a vital contribution. The jury have to decide whether the defendant is guilty or not after listening to the evidence presented by the legal experts, the barristers or advocates. The judge guides the proceedings and helps the jury on points of law. Nicola Williams is a barrister and she often takes time out to talk to groups of youngsters. The vast majority of judges are barristers by training. Um, there are some solicitors that become judges, but the vast majority, as I say, are barristers. All you really need for that is you have to have been a barrister for a long time. Uh, there's a minimum period, I, I forget which, it's either seven years or ten years before you can be considered to sit as a part-time judge, which is called an assistant recorder. Um, if you, decide, if you sit as a part-time judge, you do it for approximately four weeks every year. You might decide that you like it, then, then you, you carry on from there. You become a full-time recorder, then you become a full-time judge. Then eventually, if, if, if that's where your aspirations lie, you can become a Court of Appeal judge and a House of Lords judge. I uh, look for people to appoint as permanent judges uh, from the ranks of those who are doing it already part-time. And I look for people who have a good knowledge of the law in the area of the appointment. For example, uh, if I'm looking for someone to appoint to the family division of the High Court, I would set, expect someone who has particular experience in the family law area. It's a very responsible job. I'm only a part-time judge. I sit four weeks a year. I find it very stimulating, but very responsible. You have to concentrate a lot and do your very best to make sure that fairness is achieved all round. It's very important to be a good listener if you're a judge because only by listening carefully can you pick up details that otherwise you might miss. Some people think that the clothes we wear in court are old-fashioned and silly but I think they're important because they're a kind of uniform and everybody looks the same and that prevents the personality of the advocate or the judge becoming excessively important. The clothes that we wear is first of all the wig. Judges have a different type of wig. We wear a wing collar and bands like vicars do. Although some people are against wearing wigs and gowns in court in this day and age, I think I'm in favour of it because as I say it's a kind of uniform and it prevents the personality of the individual coming to the fore. You attach one of those wing collars and then you put the bands on over the wing collar. So that's the men's ones. The women's ones are different. I honestly don't know why, except that I think it's probably because if you're wearing maybe a low, a lowish neckline, then you can sort of stick this inside, and that's the reason why it's different. I can't see myself, but I think that's probably... I'll pull it to take you off. <laughs> And you can probably see now why they say that you have to wear colours that are compatible with the robe, so they, they have to be dark colours as well. I've taken up busking. Well, keeps me off the streets. The law is the law. That's one thing for sure. I don't mean a bitch, but it's one for the rich and it's one for the poor. And if you're not quick, you'll wind up in the nick. I'm not a fool and catch villains and all, but which is which? They say it's better than the devil, you know, you got to keep the status quo. So don't cross that legal line and you and me will get on fine. The law is quicksand. You can think where you stand. Don't say what the heck you'll be up to your neck and it's slung in the van. The judge was a wig. It makes him look big. Me money is earned, but I'm off for a sick. And the judge says he knows about life and how it goes. He says, Now listen, mate, I'm back up to date. I dig 
say to school. The legal profession is steeped in tradition, and tradition has a part to play in ensuring continuity with our past. Uh, it is a link with that past that uh, I think has led to the wigs and gowns of the judges and uh, barristers. I um, think the time is ripe for considering to what extent those uh, wigs and gowns should be retained, because this is not a matter just for the judges or the legal profession, it's a matter for the public. What do they want? Uh, what do those who see judges want? The atmosphere in court can be intimidating, especially if you've never been before. Chris Thorpe is a music producer who was called upon to serve as a juror. He found the experience unnerving. The atmosphere was such that you are set apart from everybody else and you feel as though you're in this box and nearly on trial yourselves, you know. Uh, the whole atmosphere of the court was such that I felt we were not being intimidated, but kept in our place, so to speak. Um, and my reading of the situation of a juror is that you are there to do an extremely important job. The idea of having jurors in the Crown Court and lay magistrates is because the theory is that ordinary people should play a part in the criminal justice system. Now, it's a matter of opinion as to what, how well that works, in fact, because you may find, for example, that if you have a, a, a group of 12 jurors, some people have sat on juries before and so they've got some experience of it, some people may never have sat on juries before, and the ones that have sat on juries before have more experience, may then bully, if you like, the ones who don't have any experience, or the ones who are older may bully the younger ones. I wasn't very worried at first, but as, as the evidence was shown and the thing progressed, I realised I was going to have to make a very difficult decision. It wasn't easy at all. And in fact, the night before we had to give the verdict, I hardly slept at all. I think when you're dealing with a trial as a juror, you honestly don't know what kind of trial you're going to get. You may get something fairly straightforward, you might get something that's really harrowing. Well, the case was uh, about a, a murdered or a baby that was dead by some means or other, and it had been terribly mistreated. It was only a very young baby, and we saw, had to see all sorts of really awful pho photographs of the corpse of this baby and here, all sorts of medical evidence to try and find out what had actually killed it. And it was terribly disturbing. I, I, I can in, even now uh, close my eyes and see these pictures of this mutilated little corpse. I think that there is scope for some sort of counselling. Almost like there could be a person whose job it is in the court building to be available to talk to people. It's a terribly lonely position to be in, not allowed to talk to people when you want to, and need to. Right, so I'm arresting you. Uh, you haven't given me your name or your address and I think you're a danger to yourself. Uh, you don't have to say anything, anything you do say may be given in evidence. There's no van available, so you're going to have to try and get this man in, in the vehicle and, and take whatever steps right, you sir. need. You, you realise why I've arrested you, do you? No. No. Right. Uh, I feel that you're a danger to yourself. The police must know the law. They have to use it every day, all the time, 
and at their training school, they are taught to carry out their duties tactfully. Right, OK, now, and you'll now be taking the prisoner to the custody officer. OK, well done, stop. Excellent. Just talk your way through it. What was good? Uh, called the van first. Right. Well, uh, mobile unit. Told them what I was arresting them for. OK, good. Uh, yet still, I was keeping a good rapport between the both of us. Excellent. Your level of control was yeah. excellent. You know, a nice manner, you went over, you talked to the person, kept the rapport going. At the same time, when you need to be a little bit firmer, you know, when you start to struggle a bit in the back, trying to, trying to get in the front of the car, you just have the right amount of force, really. In my capacity as a member of the Rasa community... I the police know that they are often accused of treating minority communities differently. I police the community. Here, Raul Dero is helping trainees to question their attitudes. I myself, as an individual, born and raised in England, in as much as I've been to the Caribbean, my experiences as a black British. I use the word black British rather than British black, because in, in as much as I've been a part of this society from year one to where I am now, I've never been able to actually fully feel as though I'm party to the activities of this society. So we must dispel the myth that black people see all white people as the enemy. Nevertheless, as Rastafarians, we are still marginalized. We understand that the law is the law and that marijuana invariably will bring some of our members into conflict with that law. But what is important is that the society is made up of multicultural communities. Yeah, I thought the Sultan has been really interesting. I've really enjoyed it. I think some things have come out a bit idealistic because I think the problem is just never going to be solved. Sure. But I think that both sides are going to have to work together and That's give and right. take, which I don't think is happening at the moment. Okay. I think that Britain's got a little bit further to go yet. Sure. I haven't got all the answers, but what I do know is that the youth of today are the people tomorrow. And it's important that we consider their future and we collectively hold in hands make positive progress. Can't say anything more than that. In Scotland, permission has just been given by the Lord Advocate to allow certain trials to be televised, as happens in the United States at the moment. The case of 12-year-old Gregory Kingsley was widely seen on TV. He wanted to leave his mother and live permanently with his foster family. Are you doing this because you want to hurt your mother? No. Are you doing it? Why are you doing it? I'm doing it for me so I can be happy. And how do you feel about your mom? I mean, I don't love her like a mom. You did have a, a severe drinking problem, did you not? No. You spent most of your money on alcohol and drugs, didn't you? No. You did cocaine at that time too, no. didn't you? If some court cases are seen on television in the UK, then people might find it easier to understand the legal process. This is what I have learned from my life. Life is like an onion. It has many layers, it can make you cry, and sometimes, sometimes, it stinks. It's true, you know. This life is like an onion soup. They skin you, cut you, chop you up and chuck you in And if you don't, if you don't take care You get burned The law is a bit like life Both can give you grief, both can make you weep So you may as well, yes you really all So know your onions. Go out there, learn about the law, change the world. <laughs>